An Introduction to the Book of Enoch and the Old Testament, Early Church History, and the Seven Laws of Noah. The Book of Enoch contains many details regarding the fallen angels and their offspring, the giants, the origin of evil or familiar spirits, as well as that of the dinosaurs. It contains many admonitions regarding righteousness versus unrighteousness, including many prophecies and parables. This book provides descriptions regarding the heavens, hell or its equivalent, planetary and celestial laws, the seasons and weather, and much, much more. According to historians, this book was available in two or more languages throughout the years of 200 BC through 200 AD. This book was widely read by the Jews and early Christians as well. Recently, I submersed myself into the study of early church history. I was amazed at just how deep this rabbit hole goes. I will only highlight a few points in the interest of time. I had desired to learn more about the canonization process of Scripture, since this seems to be an argument of those who would choose to reject the Book of Enoch. I discovered that within the fourth century many very disturbing events occurred regarding the Christian faith. There was the Diocletianic or Great Persecution of 302 AD by the Roman Emperor Diocletian where scriptures and people were burned and many martyrs were made. In approximately 325 AD, the Roman Emperor Constantine legalized Christianity under his dictatorship. The First Council of Nicaea was where Constantine ordered all the church leaders of the entire known Roman world together. Constantine's interventions promoted the formation of a new one-world religion. He required the standardization of the faith by the promotion of canon laws over the scriptures and over the people. He insisted that pagan rituals such as Easter be combined with Christian holy days such as the resurrection of Christ and more. Still later in the year 363 or 364 AD, the Council of Laodicea convened. It seems that Christians were praying to and worshiping angels. A church law was instituted that this was permissible and encouraged, but for only three angels, namely Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, all of which who are mentioned in the Catholic canon of scriptures. At the Council of Rome in 745 AD, Pope Saint Zachary laid down this law again because the names of additional angels such as Uriel and others were still being used. Amazingly, the veneration of and the prayer to the three approved angels are currently practiced within Catholicism today. Many Catholic churches even participate in the celebration of Holy Feast Days in honor of Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. Nonetheless, the mention of all other angelic names remains prohibited. It is my belief that no angel is to be prayed to, nor to be celebrated or worshipped by men. In Revelation 22 verses 8 and 9, John had fell down to worship the angel and the angel corrected him by telling him not to do it, as he was his fellow servant. 
By simple default, this prohibition of the mention of angelic names within this church law creates a conundrum. The Book of Enoch could never be accepted into the Roman Catholic Church canon because it lists many angelic names. Much later, the Protestants would actually condemn even more scriptures, condensing the available Holy Scriptures even further by the removal of several more sacred books. Fast forwarding to the 16th and 17th centuries where Catholic and Protestant canons of scriptures are locked up and closed. By this action they require that we believe that God no longer speaks to the followers of Jesus. To this I object. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. John chapter 10 verse 27. In addition to this, from the 16th through the 19th centuries, we find many inquisitions of Catholics as well as Protestants where believers are accused, coerced, controlled, intimidated, subdued, essentially persecuted by threats and deeds of torture and death for all who would disagree or who would not conform to the rules of these now very powerful institutions. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 19 While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, the same is he brought in bondage. John chapter 8 verse 36 If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. My prayer for all of you, my viewers, is that you are no longer manipulated by church laws and the traditions created by men, and that you have been truly set free by our Lord Jesus Christ. Many of the scriptures that I am about to reveal in the next video are from fragments of the Book of Noah as documented within the Book of Enoch. Here are some interesting facts that my research uncovered regarding this Old Testament patriarch of the worldwide flood, otherwise known as Noah. After the flood, Noah was given seven laws by God with a token signifying a covenant reflected by the sign of the bow or the rainbow. See Genesis chapter 9 verses 13 through 17. Noahide laws or Noahide code are a set of seven moral imperatives that were given by God to Noah as a binding set of laws for all of mankind. These are listed in what was formerly known as the Oral Law, but now called the Talmud, which is written in books of the Hebrew faith. These seven laws are also embedded within the Ten Commandments and the 613 laws of God given to Moses. You can find partial lists of them in areas of the New Testament including, but not limited to, these scriptures. See Matthew chapter 19 verses 17 through 19, Romans chapter 13 verses 9 and 10, and Acts chapter 15 verses 20 and 29. Please note, Acts chapter 15 verses 1 through 31 is believed to be the record of the first council of Jerusalem or apostolic conference of 50 AD. The seven laws of Noah as listed in the Talmud. Number one, you shall not have any idols before God. Number two, you shall not murder. Number three, you shall not steal. Number four, you shall not commit any of a series of sexual prohibitions 
namely adultery, fornication, incest, anal sex, and bestiality. Number five, you shall not blaspheme God's name. Number six, do not eat flesh taken from an animal while it is still alive. Number seven, the requirement to have just laws. Do not punish by these lessons. And this concludes my introduction. Next in this series, the Book of Enoch and the Old Testament, Genesis, Numbers, and Exodus, coming soon. Thanks for watching. God bless you all.